What up, people? It's been a little while since I've made a video, but I figured I'd make a little follow-up on my last video. All right, uh, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to link two things in the description, maybe more, but I'm going to link... I'll decide that as I go along with the video, but I'm going to link at least two things in the video. First thing I'm going to link is the PC version of Amazon Kindle. Now, basically what this is, it's just a program. It's like, it's like, it's like uh, having a Kindle, but you can read Kindle books on your computer free of charge. And the program is free of charge. You just download it and you install it and it's, you're good to go. You link it with your Amazon account and you can, you know, read books that you purchased. Or hell, you could even add books on there if you know what you're doing. You know, without purchasing them. You know what you're doing. I'm going to link that. And I'm going to link, I'm going to link one book in the description of the video. It's only 99 cents. It's a digital book from Amazon. It's called Defending Shylock by uh, Stephen R.C. Hicks which I think is a very important book and needs to be read. All right. Now, this is a kind of a follow-up to my last video because I talked a little bit about people who think private banking is a scam, you know, credit crunches are fiction, that um, that speculators are evil. I even read one comment. This was I, I think I mentioned this in my last video. I don't remember. But it was one of the dumbest comments I'd ever read. Uh, they said, in, just or, in more just times, or in juster times, uh, usurers were ostracized and speculators were hung. You know, enough said. I mean, apparently they don't know that, you know, in, insofar as speculators, apparently they don't know that um, Bill Gates is a speculator, Steve Jobs was a speculator, um, the person who invented the automobile was a speculator, the Wright brothers, the people who freaking built the, the first airplane, they were speculators in their own right. I mean, you can't have innovation without speculation. It's impossible. But anyway, you know, the, the book Stephen, that Stephen R.C. Hicks wrote, Defending Shylock, he talks about the financial sector. He's defending, you know, financial work. And people think, oh, financial services, that's not work. Is they're not creating anything. And he makes the case that these people are basing this off of kind of a, they're using kind of a labor theory of value to kind of base this off of. And he even provided an example. Say we're at a factory, all right? Sometimes the floor workers, the, guy, the lowest guys on the totem pole, sometimes they'll call the foreman a parasite because they'll say, oh, well, you know, the foreman, you know, he's making all this money, but he's not doing any work. He's just sipping coffee, you know, telling everybody else what to do, all right? Sometimes the foreman and the, uh, sometimes the foreman and the laborers will call the managers parasites because they say, Oh, well, you know, the manager's making all this money, but they're not even, he's not even on the factory floor. He's up in an air conditioning office shuffling papers, just, you know, shuffling papers. The managers, the foreman, and the, and the, uh, and the laborers will call the uh, stockholders a parasite because they say, oh, well, you know, the stockholders are making all this money, but they don't even run the company. You know, they're not working on the company at all. And it keeps going on and on and on until somebody's calling the stock index speculators parasites because they say, oh, well, you know, the stock index speculators are making all this money, but they don't have stock in any particular company. They're just betting on whether or not a given index will rise or fall. If, are you noticing a trend here? The person who's furthest away from the labor gets called, who's further and further away from the labor gets called parasite. You know, he gets ostracized pretty much for being further and further and further away from the physical labor. This is a problem because you think the foreman's not doing any work? He's got to decide how the labor should be best, you know, allocated in order to reach a given, you know, whatever whatever the goal is. The manager's got to decide who should be the foreman. And so on and so on. The stockholders have to figure out which company is they think is going to be the most productive so they can invest in that company. The stock index speculators have to figure out which... Uh, which indexes are going to be the most productive and which ones aren't? So they can allocate capital there. Capital has to be allocated, and that's what the financial services do. And to do this, it takes a level of abstract thinking. And he makes the case, most people are not really abstract thinkers. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you can't have speculation without, you know, you can't have innovation without speculation, and you can't have progress without allocation. Capital has to be allocated. Now, coming to the usurer. Now, this is a guy hardly nobody likes. People say, 
oh, well, you know, anybody who charges interest is a usurer. This is, usury has got to be one of the most misunderstood things in society, period. Usury is not charging interest in and of itself. That's what these people are thinking. They're thinking, uh, okay, so if I loaned a person $100 and I charged him 2% interest, that's really, that's a really low interest rate. 2% interest, I'm a usurer, automatically. That's not true. Usury is not interest rates, period. Usury is charging an unreasonably high interest rate. Now, what most people don't think about is, you know, what, what is an interest, you know, how, how do interest rates come about? They don't understand the nature of interest. They think that interest rates are just some arbitrary thing people pull out of their asses to charge. All right. So uh, if, coming back to me loaning somebody $100, if I loan somebody $100 and I'm thinking, okay, I want to charge this guy an interest rate, what should the interest rate be? Um, how about 10%? Okay, so I'm going to just charge you 10% interest and let that be that. See, I just pulled 10% out of my ass just then. This is not how interest rates work on the market. This is what people think banks are doing when, they, when they're drafting up an interest rate, or this is what credit card companies do when they're drafting up interest rates. This is not true. This is not how interest rates work. Interest, it's when people are coming up with an interest rate, when banks or credit card companies, they think of three things. First, they think of the individual's time preference, the person who's borrowing the money. They think of the time preference. Does the person have a high time preference or a low time preference? Now, time preference is very simple. All right, I guess I'll link an article on that too. Time preference is very simple. Do you want something now or do you want it later? Very, very simple. All right. So if you have a high time preference, that means you're 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 borrowing stuff, uh, you're buying stuff strictly to consume. All right. If you have a low time preference, that means you're putting off your consumption to a later date. All right. So here's an example. If I go to the store and I buy a drink. I have a high time preference for drinks. All right, but if I go to the store and I think I could buy a drink and I want to buy a drink, but I'm not going to buy a drink. Instead, I'm going to save my money up to buy more drinks later. That means I have a low time preference for drinks. Does that make sense? All right, that's just the, that was the best I could do to explain it. All right, that's time preference. Second thing people think about when they're when they're drafting up a uh, an interest rate is the amount of savings that are actually in the economy. The higher the savings, the lower the interest rate will be, and vice versa. The lower the savings, the higher the interest rates are going to be. Because interest rates are meant to go up when the savings in the economy are low. The lower the savings, the higher the interest rate is going to be, and vice versa. All right? The final thing that is taken into consideration is the risk to the lender. You know, whoever the lender is, it could be somebody at the bank, it could be somebody at a, at a credit card company, or it could be a loan company. It could be anybody. They consider the risk to uh, the risk to the uh, they they consider the risk when they make the loan. All right. So if like that's what your credit rating is there for. So if somebody has a, a crappy credit rating, they're going to get a higher interest rate normally than somebody else. All right. But if they have a good credit rating, they're going to get a lower, somewhat lower interest rate. So why are interest rates so high now? We have high time preferences. Look at how much we're charging on damn credit cards. That's proof in and of itself. Look at all the stuff we're buying. I mean, we're not, we're not borrowing to produce. We're borrowing to consume. We're on a consumption binge right now. And, you know, we have, a, we have too high of a time preference. The savings in the economy are low. We have close to $16 trillion in debt. Enough said. All right. And... There's high risk to the lender because a lot of people are not paying back their loans. So even people with really, really good credit ratings are getting are getting blasted with high interest rates because all three of these because how bad the economy is because people might decide even people with really good credit might just decide you know the hell with it I'm not going to pay this money back I mean there's no sense in me paying this money back you know so I'm just going to renege on all this and just enjoy the benefits. That's even people with really good credit so. Savings are, savings are low, time preference is high, and risk to the lenders are high. So, of course, the interest rate's going to be through the roof, even for people with really good credit. 
I mean, but most people don't consider this. They think, oh, well, you know, they could just get a government loan because government's low interest and that's not a scam. And no, yeah, it is. That is a scam because you're borrowing taxpayers' money. So, no, but whatever, that's, that's another video for another day. But most people don't get these things. Because, because of the fact that most people don't think, don't understand the nature of interest, they think interest rates are a scam. They think that you can actually have a complex economy without interest rates. Interest rates allow for resources to be allocated in places that they could not normally be. So if I'm a businessman and I go to the bank to take out a loan, you know, a, a relatively large loan, because hey, you know, I want to start a company, and uh, there's no profit to the bank for making this loan, you know, so if I just, I just pay back the principal and that's the end of it, there's no incentive for the bank to give me this loan for a project that, that may or may not work. There's a lot of risk to the, to the bank there. But if there's an interest rate, there's more incentive for the bank to loan me the money. So if I agree to pay an interest rate, you know, whatever it is, I mean, like take out a business loan that could say, uh, we'll charge you 20% interest or something like that and I agree to this, I get the loan and then I can start my company. You see how this works? But without that interest rate, I couldn't do that. This gets back to what I was saying earlier. Capital must be allocated. But anyway, I'm just gonna leave it at that because my throat is getting really dry and I need something to drink. You know, time preference. You know, I have a high time preference for drinks right now. You know, my throat's dry and I'm thirsty and I'm, I'm getting bombarded by wasps out here, and I, those big, really big red mahogany wasps, they're assholes, you know, they, they, they'll sting your ass just for no fucking reason, and I'm really getting tired of sitting out of here, so, I'm out of here, peace, see ya, bye.